We're looking at a, a class of drugs called checkpoint inhibitors, and these are, are not to be confused with immune checkpoints, but uh, checkpoint kinase inhibitors. And, and, and what those uh, molecules do is, is when there's damage to a cell, checkpoints are activated to kind of pause before replication to give time to make repair of the damages. So if a chemotherapy causes some damage, the, the natural response is for the cell to pause, repair it, and so it can survive. And if you can uh, get rid of those checkpoints or get rid of the pauses, then uh, the cells will move towards cell death. So it's kind of a way we would consider it more of a chemopotentiating ag agent, something that's going to try to make a standard or FDA-approved agent uh, work better. Can you tell me then about the study that you've conducted? Yeah, so we looked at uh, checkpoint kinase 1 inhibitor, GDC0425. Uh, this is a selective CHECK1 inhibitor, and uh, we gave it in combination with gemcitabine, which is an FDA-approved agent uh, and is commonly used for multiple cancer types. And the goal was to try to, to make gemcitabine work better uh, in those cancer patients. And your patients had which sorts of solid tumors? Yeah, so it was a broad phase one study where we were trying to find the best doses of the two drugs to give together. Uh, we were able to uh, give full dose gemcitabine with uh, the 0425 at 60 milligrams for one day on a day one and day eight schedule of gemcitabine on a uh, 221 days or every three weeks. And uh, we enrolled a broad variety of, of, of tumor types within the trial. Of the 40 patients that were enrolled, uh, 10 of them did have breast cancer and eight of them were triple negative breast cancer and then uh, five of them were lung cancer. So those were the two most common uh, tumor types that enrolled into the trial. You've given some indication already of the safety of the, of the regimen. What exactly did you find and did you see any efficacy? Right, so from a safety standpoint, uh, you're potentiating the gemcitabine, hopefully to make it work better, but the main side effects are you potentiate the inherent toxicity of gemcitabine, which uh, is marrow suppression or bone marrow suppression. And so uh, when we, we looked at uh, the toxicity profiles, the main grade three, four adverse events we saw were marrow suppression, but predominantly neutropenia. It occurred in about 40% of patients. Uh, uh, anemia and thrombocytopenia were below that in the 10 to 15% range. Um, so uh, it does have some marrow, uh, probably increased marrow suppression when you add the two drugs together, but it was very manageable with either dose reductions or dose modifications to the gemcitabine. Um, it, we had no other major uh, safety uh, concerns with the combination, and the marrow toxicity is the primary adverse event. Now, phase one, of course, you're not looking for efficacy, but uh, you found some. Well, uh, of the 40 patients, we had eight patients that uh, stayed on trial for more than six months. Uh, and this was a phase one study, so very advanced solid tumor patients. Uh, of those eight patients, three of them were partial responses. One was in a um, cancer of unknown primary patient. The second was a melanoma patient that had a P53 mutation, and uh, the third was a triple negative breast cancer patient that had a P53 mutation. And P53 mutations may uh, make uh, or, or may increase the chances of responding to a check inhibitor uh, because it also affects that checkpoint uh, or the controls on, on when the, how the cell goes through uh, cycling. What do you read into these data that is a potential value to cancer doctors? Well, I think that uh, we've been working hard uh, to uh, find combinations of, of cytotoxic chemos that patients can stay on for long periods of time you know, without getting uh, you know, too many side effects because the standard drugs work. They're just hard to stay on o over long periods. Uh, developing uh, a chemopotentiator type of molecule, you hopefully don't get too much additive toxicity so that it'd be more like just taking a single agent gemcitabine but with better activity. And you can imagine that if we could make gemcitabine more potent and, and it is approved and, and used in so many different settings, that this could be a useful combination. So can the medical community look forward to potentially a new combination? Well, think? I think uh, the, the, that this trial created a platform that, yes, you can give a check inhibitor with gemcitabine. Um, the safety profile uh, is not much worse than giving gemcitabine alone, and uh, so the tolerability for the combination was there. Uh, we also were able to show that uh, we could modulate the target of check so that we could give doses of the drug that are actually meaningful, and then we had clinical activity, but to understand how much better it is than gemcitabine alone will take uh, you know, random, bigger and uh, randomized trials.